guys, it's me Nicole, and with me as always is Sweet Mabel. So we're going to talk about grooming clippers and attachment combs and blades. My go-to clipper has always been the Andes brand. Uh, this is the one that I'm currently using now. It's called the Power Groom. Uh, it's kind of cool. You can go up and down depending on the level of power that you want to use. If a dog has a lot of mats, you may need to up the power to get through the mat. If you want to know how to put a blade on, this particular clipper has a little button right here. You push that in, and when you push that in, your blade can pop forward. This little guy here goes back and forth. Uh, when you turn a clipper on, let me try to show you. Okay. This little thing moves back and forth, and what that moves is the back of the blade. See how this goes back and forth? That blade drive goes right here. These two planes of teeth, this back one and this front one, the teeth moving is what actually cuts through the hair. That's why it's important to have a sharp blade all the time. Uh, if you should happen to drop your blade, you don't need to use that anymore. These Blades can chip and that can cause cuts. So if you drop a blade, I recommend buying a new one. Again, I like Andy's. I'm always using this number 10 blade. Uh, it's great for corners of the eyes, mats, um, shaving the inside of the ear, paw pads, privates, uh, armpits. This is kind of my go-to blade for anything like that. And it just so happens it fits underneath um, the metal attachment combs that I like to use. So when you're putting your blade back on, again, this particular set of clippers, you simply line up this little guy here with this little guy here. I'll try to show that, let's see. Like that. And then close it. If it doesn't close all the way, then that means that something's not lined up quite right. And so what it usually is, you know, I moved this back and forth for you guys. What it usually is, is this little guy is far too over to one side. And so you should be able to just push your blade back towards the middle in order to fit on there. And so you just line that up like so, pop it back on, turn it on when it's not up against the dog, just to make sure the teeth look good and you got a good sound. You'll get to know the sound of your clippers as you get to use them. Uh, so the next thing I like to use that I told you about are metal attachment combs. I do like using these a whole lot because they give you a wide variety of haircuts kind of all in one box. Each comb is going to leave the dog's hair a different length. And so uh, one of the shortest combs is the number four here. That's gonna be really short. And then a really long comb, the longest one in the set, is an e-comb. Here's the difference, just so you can tell. The e-comb here, you can see it's got a little e on it. And then it has a length on here for how long it leaves the hair. I don't feel like it's always right. This says one inch. I feel like this is longer than an inch whenever I do haircuts on dogs. I feel like this is more like an inch and a half. A lot of times I'll like to do a shorter comb on the body and maybe a fuller comb on the legs for like a lamb look and maybe a fuller comb on the top of the head. Oh comb, the yellow one, that's my favorite. So they have little hinges at the bottom right here of your blade. And so when you're putting that on, you kind of line this up. I'm trying to show you the best I can. You lift the comb up and over. And again, before you start on the dog, you're gonna to wanna to turn your clippers on to make sure there's a good sound and everything is lining up. If you don't line it up all the way and this metal isn't over both sides securely, you may get like a and that's bad. So take this off, you go up, over, and out, and then those come off of there. And so you can just readjust it if you're hearing that gah, 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 noise. Well, professional noise, I know. Uh, you heard me on my other videos um, talk about a wide tooth comb and why it's so important whenever you're gonna give your dog a good brush out to also use a wide tooth comb at the end. Whenever you're doing a haircut on a dog, 
you're going to be using these metal attachment cones or blades, we'll go over there in a second. But if you'd like your dog to be in a longer haircut, a lot of the times we are, we as groomers or you as people at home are going to use these attachment combs. So that means that these teeth have to be able to go through the coat. Well, guess what lines up? The wide tooth comb. Look at that. They're like perfect. So as long as you can get a wide tooth comb through your dog's coat, there should be no problem with getting this comb through it. And that does mean all the way down to the skin, right? Not just floating over the top. When we comb our hair, we go all the way down to the scalp and then pull out, right? You need to do the same thing on your dogs. Okay, some popular blade lengths are uh, number 10, like I told you about, and that's for potty areas, um, any mats, that aren't super severe, around the eyes, paw pads, around the booty area, that 10 blade works really good. And then there are other blades. There are sevens, fives, fours. And again, these are kind of exactly the same as the attachment combs, right? The different length will be right here. So this is a four blade, this is longer than a seven blade. And you can tell that by this right here. And so the, the reason why I like to have attachment combs rather than a bunch of blades is because blades can run you anywhere from 30 to $50. And so that can get expensive. If I wanted to do short on the body and longer on the legs, or I would, and maybe even something longer on the head, I would have to have three sets of blades. Whereas with the attachment comb set, I can just use a wide variety of items. But again, your dog has to be totally brushed out. The blades are good for dogs that are not brushed out, um, that you have mats, or if you go to the groomer and they're like, you know, I'm gonna have to do a smoothie, which I think a lot of people will probably consider bald, right? Like if you brought a dog in that looked like Mabel and your groomer called and said, I'm really sorry, but I'm gonna have to do a smoothie today. It's probably going to be a seven blade. Um, they may be able to get a four through it, but again, these little teeth have to be able to get underneath the mat that is there. And it's very painful to drag this thing through if it's not moving smoothly, you need to move to a step shorter. Okay, the seven is it's a shave down if your dog is really matted, or if you just want your dog to be in a super short haircut, you use a seven. If you want them a little bit longer, but still pretty much shaved down, you could use the four. And again, the side of the blade is gonna tell you how long the coat is left just the same as the attachment comb. Some of the blades are about the same length as the attachment comb. The attachment comb's like this, right? The blade's like this. These, these are pretty close in length to one another. And so what would make you use one over the other? Well, maybe you only wanna spend $30 on one blade and you want your dog to have a short haircut all the time. Or maybe you like to do a short haircut in the summer and a long haircut in the winter, then attachment combs is where you wanna go because the cost of one blade is close to half as the cost of the metal comb set. This is, is, is going to be an expense at first. You're probably looking at $200 for a set of clippers and maybe $30 for the 10 blade. You do need the 10 blade to fit underneath the attachment combs, okay? These don't do any sort of cutting. Those are just a guard comb to say how long they, uh, the hair should be left. $200, $250 for a set of clippers, $30 to $50 for this 10 blade, and then probably another $50, $60 for the set of metal attachment combs. They do make plastic attachment combs, and there's nothing wrong with those. Those work great too. Um, so either one of those would be great. So you're probably looking at, you know, three to $400 for your first investment on tools. But then after that, they're yours. You can do the haircut whenever you want. You can do it however you want. And it's always available to you. Um, rather than paying, you know, 50 to 100 bucks every four to eight weeks 
Um, if you're wanting to do this at home and save some money, this is a great way to go. Okay, let me know if you guys have any questions or ideas for videos, and yeah, I'll try to get them done for you. Okay, thanks so much for tuning in. Bye guys.